Hello and welcome to the third part. Today we're going to be looking at the change in substrate concentration. Substrate concentration is basically defined as how much of the substrate is there. So if I had a lot of substrate and enzyme, wh what is that going to do to the enzyme? How is it going to affect the enzyme? So our aim is to investigate the effect of substrate concentration on enzyme activity. The enzyme we're using today is catalase, which is also commonly found in crushed capsicum, potato, and a lot of other things. Our substrate that we're using is hydrogen peroxide. Catalase is, is able to break down hydrogen peroxide into, into, into H2O and oxygen, as seen in this diagram here. So we've got the catalase, which is being dropped inside to the H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, and that turns into H2O and oxygen. So this is water, right? So this, this water and oxygen is the products. Okay, now let's go down and have a look at the method. So we have to prepare five different dilutions of 5% hydrogen peroxide solution and one tube of distilled water as shown in the table below. So in each tube we've got a different concentration of hydrogen peroxide. As you can see, 2 ml and 8 ml of distilled water. So 2 ml of hydrogen peroxide and 8 ml of distilled water. And from the calculations, you know that that's only 1% of hydrogen peroxide. The second tube, we have 4 ml of hydrogen peroxide and 6 ml of distilled water. That is again just 2% of hydrogen peroxide solution. Going on, we increase the concentration of hydrogen peroxide and we have one control. So tube 6 is our control. Now controls are usually used so we can you know compare and contrast. So we can compare and contrast our results using this control. Now we've after we've set up this uh, this layer, after we set up five test tubes with different concentrations of hydrogen peroxide and one test tube with 10 ml of distilled water, we can now go on to the serious part. So how do we make these react? Obviously, we enter, we put in the enzyme which is actually needed. All these are substrates. So this is the substrate, hydrogen peroxide substrate. Substrate, 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 and substrate. These are all substrates. And our enzyme is the crushed capsicum. And as discussed below, uh, b above, crushed capsicum has the enzyme called catalase in it. Catalase can break down hydrogen peroxide and, and produce the products of H2O and oxygen, as seen over here. So, moving on. After you conduct this experiment, you can pretty much tell that the most effective, the most effective time of the the enzyme is like the most effective substrate concentration is at around three to four, three, th three, four, and five test tubes. Our uh, test tubes three, four, and five. We can tell this because it looks as if it's working at its peak. Now, here is how it should look like. We got relative enzyme activity. And that is being measured in centimeters, so height of bubbles. We then have the um, the percentage of substrate concentration. Yeah, so it's just calculating the percentage of the of H two O two and that is pretty much it. So now we can actually draw a graph. Now Assuming that these results were correct, I'm going to draw the graph that you should get in your experiment. So, that. that. You should get a graph that looks something like this. So, you have this increase, 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 and then it's just optimal. It's going straight, straight, straight. Until, until there are more enzymes to actually catalyze the reaction. So, as you can see, this is probably, you know, I could say this is 1%, this is, uh, you know, 2%, and then as soon as it comes to 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%, 14%, 15%, 16%, 17%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 21%, 22%, 23%, 24%, 25%, 26%, 27%, 
6%. You can see that. These are how enzymes work. If you have an enzyme, suppose that's my enzyme, and this is my substrate. Now, if this enzyme and this substrate is going to attach, for that time being that they're attached, no more substrates are going to be able to attach to this enzyme. So now, suppose I have around 500 enzymes, and I have, you know, 6%, say, suppose, 200, uh, suppose I have 2,000 substrates. So we have 500 enzymes, 2,000 substrates. Now, those 500 enzymes will only be able to take in 500 substrates at a time. So, can only take, uh, take, uh, they can only take in, a limited amount, amount of substrates, at a time. So, in this case, we have 6%, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6% of uh, hydrogen peroxide. And over here, we've got relative enzyme activity, so height of bubbles. The height of bubbles is going to be constant. It's going to be exactly the same for 2, 3, 4, well, 3, 4, 5, 6%. Because the thing is that there aren't enough enzymes to actually make it even faster. That the activity is going to remain the same because there's a limited amount of enzymes. Now, since that's the case, this is the common graph you should see, just a regular, something like that. It goes straight like that, you know? It's, it, 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 has a, it stops at this certain saturation point, so you can actually just name this as saturation point. So, can you tell me what we kept the same in the entire experiment? Let's go back. Let's go back here and have a look. So, we did not keep hydrogen peroxide same. We did not keep anything else the same. The only thing we actually kept the same was the amount of drops that we actually added to the solution. So, we added only one ml of crushed capsicum, which contains catalase, to every single solution. So, would we keep constants? That is pretty much concluding the last three lessons that I've had on this. And uh, we've now actually covered the entire dot point. We've seen what it can do, uh, what the enzyme acti relative enzyme activity is when we have an increased temperature, when we have change in pH, as well as a change in substrate concentration. Thanks for watching.